Hello, this is James Hunter, and yes, this is a shameless bicep shot that I'm doing. And in this video today, as part of my series of uh, uh, fitness in my 50s uh, play, playlist series that I started, uh, I'm, I'm doing different things in this play, uh, playlist that I created for fitness in my 50s, you know, body composition goals I have as a man in his 50s. I'm 52 years old. Uh, for those who haven't seen my other videos, I'm 52. Uh, I'm going to be speaking to performance issues where I'm challenging myself with different measures to inspire myself, but maybe other people that you can still perform at a at a high level in your 50s relative to the general population. So today I'm going to talk about something I think is uh, relevant and important because um, a lot of times, you know, sometimes people will sometimes make comments like hey, they'll throw out the, oh, your genetics or, or what do you do, right? What are you doing to stay so, where you can stay that lean uh, in your 50s, or you always seem to be reasonably fit. I've never seen you get too far gone or, or out of shape, right? In other words, what's the, what's the, what's the, it's a mystery. What's going on? Uh, a lot of times, you know, I'll just be kind of like playing around with people. I'll say, well, it's my diet, right? It's diet, right? The working out is the easy part. I love to exercise. I, I love the uh, benefits I get from it and my experience with it. So, yes, nutrition, the diet's a part of it. But the truth is, uh, even with diet, <laughs> nutrition, yes, even a good genetics, we're, we all age and get older. So things like our hormones, right? Uh, uh, testosterone, you hear a lot of talk about testosterone, particular to men, which is a uh, androgenic anabolic in nature. It's what gives men, uh, masculinizes men, gives the male characteristics, hence the, uh, you know, the androgenic properties of testosterone. So this issue uh, of testosterone and how this is part of youth and vitality, uh, particularly to younger men uh, in, their, in our peak, uh, we have higher testosterone levels. So we hit puberty, testosterone really booms, and then it stays up there for a while. And perhaps, you know, in your 20s, uh, whatever that peak might be for someone, maybe it's 24 or 25 years old. But then after that, it may be a steady uh, uh, decline in where it starts to to go down so this is nothing new i'm not like speaking about something that people haven't heard before but i'm going to speak about the topic of trt hrt uh testosterone replacement therapy in this video i'm going to talk about some points that i don't necessarily hear mentioned all the time i have a video on my play and my this channel that i have of mine uh, i'll probably put a link to that other video basically i believe i titled it uh trt is not a magic bullet right it's not a magic bullet because there's a different things I want to speak to. One, I'm going to give my opinion of of what type of people, in my opinion, that TRT is more appropriate for within a context where a person is going to make an informed decision with a medical professional, their doctor, if they're going to do that. Because ultimately, that's how it needs to happen. A person, if they're going to do it, it's an informed decision with a medical doctor, right? Uh, not because of some video you watch on YouTube, right? So I'm going to share some opinions of my beliefs and thoughts, my philosophy about TRT. So as a man in his 50s, I'm comfortable uh, telling people I, I'm on testosterone. Uh, electively chose to be on testosterone replacement therapy. I take a therapeutic dose of 120 milligrams a week. And, and that's pretty common. A lot of people I, I speak to, you know, maybe 100, 120 milligrams a week, once a week sometimes. Uh, in my case, I break it up into two injections twice a week, 60 milligrams twice a week. Part of my protocol, I'm prescri prescribed by my medical medical professional, uh, HCG, human gonadotropin. It's a luteinizing hormone. So I take that subcontinuously twice a week and essentially that just keeps my own production of testosterone naturally it still produces it doesn't shut down that can happen by the way and that can happen by the way if men if they only take testosterone only they're not taking something like hcg which is a luteinizing hormone they can cause their uh, own natural production of testosterone to shut down because the body operates on a basically like on feedback. Hey, we got plenty of testosterone. We don't need to make no more, right? Because we're artificially or, you know, we're augmenting our own supply with the injections of testosterone, the, the, the supplement, if you will, the extra. So the thing is that I take testosterone plus the HCG. That's the point. That's my protocol. Protocol is pretty straightforward. And so for me, medically supervised by a medical doctor. So I want to point out real quick too, 
Does it help? Of course it helps. Of course it helps. I'm able to, in a, in a therapeutic sense, optimize my hormones to, to within a healthy range to be on the optimal end, the higher range of what's still considered healthy. So naturally that's going to help me with recovery. Uh, sure, as far as uh, you know, the properties of being able to maintain uh, lean muscle mass easier, physical strength, uh, sure, there's going to be some benefit there. Think of this logically. If you just look at the age span, someone who's in their physical prime, let's say it's 25 years old, uh, really strong uh, in the gym, uh, a lot of energy, they recover quickly. So fast forward, let's say 30 years in the future, this person's 55 now with not the same hormone balance anymore, uh, much significant, significantly lower testosterone. This same individual is not going to recover as fast. I don't care um, how hard they work out or their nutrition. They're probably not going to have a, the same type of a quality of lean muscle mass anymore. It's just, it's just reality. So if somebody therapeutically gets their hormones close or back up to that range again from when they was 25, sure, you're obviously going to be, be feeling the benefits again of, of what it was like when you're 25. So in this sense, it's, it's getting you close to what is possible in nature when you're at your optimal end of the spectrum, right? So this is not the same thing, however, as people who take anabolic steroids and abuse them in terms of high dosages that would not be TRT level type dosages. So this is not the same thing as professional bodybuilders who are injecting, you know, two to three grams of testosterone a, a, a week in their bodies, plus taking other anabolic agents, other types of drugs and chemicals are put in their body. It's not the same thing as people perhaps in a, the NFL, some other professional sport where they take very high amounts and dosages of uh, anabolic steroids to really maximize uh, performance measures and so on. So they're not the same thing. If you know somebody on TRT, don't don't accuse that person that they're on roids. Oh, you're just like the people on roids because no, they're not. Yes, there is an additive benefit. There will be some notice that you'll feel some you'll feel stronger again. Recovery's better, but your strength is is what is will be what within what was possible for yourself as a younger man. In fact, with my situation uh, on TRT. I, I do not bench press what I could in my 20s uh, when I was not on TRT. In my early 20s, in high school, in high school, I weighed 140 pounds soaking wet and bench pressed 260 pounds raw. And I graduated high school when I was 17 years old. In my 20s, I, I legit bench pressed raw 300 pounds, uh, a bit better than 300 pounds, uh, sometimes a little more than 300 pounds. Now in my you know, 52, with a, a good, uh, within the range, acceptable high testosterone level, total testo testosterone serum level, free direct is high too. I mean, in the good range, it's considered acceptable, but high, higher end. I do not bench press 300 pounds or better anymore, right? I'm still strong. I can still bench press, uh, you know, uh, an impressive amount over my body weight and it to be respectable for compared to the general population, for sure. If I worked really, 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 really hard, because is it possible I can get to that kind of a level again? I don't know, perhaps it is, um, but it's what it is, right? So the point is that the TRT by itself is not a magic bullet, and it didn't give me back the full benefit of being a 25-year-old man again, but it, it is helping in a lot of measures. Things like the deadlift and squat, yeah, those are two lifts for a lot of people. Uh, you can stay very close to that. Maybe what, like when you were younger, something about those lifts. Everybody's different. Some people, maybe they don't lose their, their bench press strength might stay the same forever. So these are just examples of uh, strength me measures of strength in the gym. There's other measures of strength for sure. So I want to differentiate between those two things. Just because a person's on TRT, can stay lean, uh, doesn't mean the TRT is doing it all by themselves and they may as well be cheaters uh, just like people who take steroids. Aha, uh -huh, that explains it. That's why you're fit. So it's the TRT. If I were to do the same thing, yeah, I, I could look just like you or be fit just like anybody else. Uh, basically, yeah, we're, we're, we have a hack. We found the hack. We just take this uh, 
TRT injections twice a week, and then we're good to go. Nothing else required. So I want to give some examples that illustrates my point, right? So as I mentioned earlier in the video, people that are already disciplined, already have a lifestyle in place that includes prioritizing exercise, fitness, strength and conditioning, uh, cardiovascular aerobic training, uh, adherence to, to healthy eating, you know, their nutrition's good. And they don't have any unhealthy habits. They do not smoke cigarettes. They don't abuse alcohol. They're otherwise were healthy already to begin with. They just had lower uh, hormone levels and they wanted to be optimal, right? It's a quality of life issue. So they get on TRT. So these individuals do get a great benefit, but it's not the TRT by itself is the point. You still have to eat healthy. You still have to train in the gym and you still have to have a, a healthy lifestyle. So the cumulative effect of all of it working together, 100%, there's a lot of benefits to be had for sure, for sure. And, and I admit that to people clearly, I said, yes, within my lifestyle of exercise, working out and eating healthy, getting a good night's sleep with the TRT, I am deriving a very good benefit from it. It does help. Of course it does. But it's not it by itself because I know people, uh, same age as me, Hey, James, I'm on TRT now. I'm on, they're all excited, right? And some of these individuals, uh, higher doses than what my doctor prescribes me. Uh, that's a whole other issue. Some some doctors, uh, PCPs will just give them like a, <laughs> a dose that's still low by comparison to like what someone abusing steroids takes. But yeah, they might prescribe somebody 200 milligrams a week, for example. And you don't need 200 milligrams a week. For a lot of people, you don't need that, right? Uh, 100 milligrams, 120 will will put you there for most people. My experience with people I talk with, yes, there can be people who might need more. That That's true too. But anyways, you get the point. This guy was taking, he's prescribed more, more of a dose, a higher dose than myself. So this individual is feeling excited. They, they got the magic bullet finally. And you just wait, I'm on TRT now. This same individual, however, made no changes in lifestyle. Historically, they were not disciplined. Historically, this person was always looking for the easy way out, the cheat, the shortcut. This person wanted to keep drinking wine in the evenings with their partner, uh, would have this confused look on their face. Anytime you mention needing to manage macronutrients, like avoiding refined processed carbohydrates, eating whole foods only. Yes, have a certain amount of carbs, but within only what you need for energy, no more. Uh, get enough protein and fats, your estimated uh, energy requirements in terms of calories day to day, positive energy balance, right? Ca uh, negative balance if you, uh, you want to lose weight, excess fat. So all this stuff, it's not that people don't understand it. They just want to look at you with a dumb face because it's more they don't want to accept it. You're not telling me what I want to hear, right? So this person, of course, uh, continued to put crap in their body no discipline it's a, almost a form of entitlement i am entitled to get this result uh and i don't need to make any changes so this person you get the idea eat putting crap food in the body unwilling to make any changes i'm going to keep drinking alcohol in the evenings um uh, maybe have some other unhealthy habits lo and behold what happens sure they notice some uh some gains and some strength yeah you can gain some strength but their stomach <laughs> Still the same excess body fat on their stomach, perhaps even gain some more weight. And then they look all frustrated and dumbfounded. I, I'm not losing any weight. What's happening here? I'm, what do I do about my fat stomach? You know, my arms and chest are bigger. My bench press went up a bit. I, I gained 15, 20 pound increase on the bench press, but it didn't solve all the problem. Still can't lose fat, right? Still not in shape. I'm not fit. Hey, I'm not looking like the guy I was uh, being dismissive with that. Hey, it's well, that's what you're doing. So you're on TRT. If I only did that, too, I'd look just like you. So lo and behold, what individuals like this find out is that, yeah, if the only thing you do is get on TRT and make no other changes, hey, you're not going to it's not going to like a magic wand you into something that, that takes other there's other variables involved here, right? Sleep. Understanding energy balance with nutrition, caloric intake, uh, other things could be said about nutrition, but you have to have a plan. You have to be adherent, need to be consistent. Sure, the exercise, you can talk about the exercise and tweaking that, but really 
it, it boils down to lifestyle, nutrition, and, and unhealthy habits like the uh, consumption of alcohol. Uh, after eating food in the evenings, what the hell is that? You put a bunch of you putting calories in your body of food, and now I'm going to top it off with a uh, maybe five six hundred more calories worth of wine down the hatch. Yet I am confused. What's going on here? I I've been doing this TRT business and I'm still fat. So you get the idea. And I'm not trying to be mean or pick on anybody. I'm just trying to drive a point. TRT is not a magic bullet. I've been fat before in my life. I, I did them. In this video series, there's a baseline from September 6 where I was starting to get fat. I definitely have a gut. It's clear I have I'm fat, getting the, getting the pooch going on, and and I've been fatter than that before in this baseline video. I'm not. I, I've really made some really good strides, by the way, since. And my update videos will be coming up this Friday. I've almost lost all of it now. Now, in my 30s, oh man, yeah, when I worked for the state of Texas, all that Mexican food and restaurant food at lunches drank back then too. go out drink the beers i worked out too but you can't out you can't out exercise and out work out a bad diet right and unhealthy habits so yeah i've been out of balance before in my life been fat a bit if you want to use the word overweight but it's really it's about excess fat that that's what it is about losing excess fat so where i'm at today i am definitely more fit healthier the lifestyle's in place more discipline, how I prioritize things, plus being on TRT. Yeah, definitely benefits me. I am not your average 52-year-old man in terms of my physical fitness and overall health. So you get the idea. So the last part of this video, so it, I, I don't make it too, not necessarily too long to wrap it up. Here's my opinions about who this can be appropriate for and who it's not. And you're probably already going to guess what I'm going to say because I've already been speaking to it. In my opinion... It's not to pick on people. It's not a moral judgment about, oh, you're a good or bad person. It's just being honest and logical. If you're someone watching this video and you're just being honest with yourself and historically, not what you say you want to be or hope to be, uh, not that there's not something that people can't change. You can. It's possible. People can change for sure. But if you're being honest, what is the likelihood of yourself being what is best in this situation in terms of the history of your life. If you're someone who's lacked discipline, you're inconsistent, you quit on things pretty easily, you don't stick to healthy eating plans, um, inconsistent with cardiovascular exercise training at the gym, working out, strength training, that's, that's not your thing. Maybe you're a cigarette smoker, that's not good. Maybe you abuse alcohol. Uh, and if, even if you drink on the weekend, if you're drinking eight, 10 drinks, binge drinking, that's not good. So if you have unhealthy habits and if you, if you're honest, you know, that's not likely going to change very much in my opinion. Yeah. It's not a good candidate in my opinion. This is just my personal philosophy opinion. It's not advice. You talk to a doctor about your own individual situation, make an informed decision. So my opinion, people that match what I just described, yeah, you're at a higher risk to have issues, right? You, you, you could have issues, uh, being on TRT, probably the benefit may not outweigh the risk. If you're someone who is disciplined, like I mentioned, lifestyle in place, consistent, eat healthy, cardiovascular aerobic training, your nutrition is good, otherwise already healthy, then yeah, TRT, that benefit can outweigh the risk. And for my situation, the benefit far outweighs any risk. And I know that because I do lab work, comprehensive lab work, Every six months, I do a complete metabolic panel. So things like uh, liver enzymes, uh, bun creatine ratio, cre creatine in, in the bun, uh, GFR, uh, glomerular filtration rate. So another measure is measure your kidneys, right? Uh, looking at maybe like electrolytes, uh, things like that, um, and so on. I do a complete, uh, the CBC, complete uh, blood count of platelet differential. So that's looking at uh, hemocrat and, and uh a red blood cell count, white blood cell count, platelets, breaking all that business down. I do that. I do a complete lipid panel. So that's going to include triglycerides. My triglycerides are less than a hundred, right? Uh, total uh, cholesterol is, is typically it's less than the 200. HDLs may be 50s to 60s. Uh, had them as, you know, 68. Um, the ratio, they do that too. So your uh, High, den high density lipid, low density lipid, they'll ratio it. And then the total with the uh, 
HDL ratio, and then I'll tell you what your risk is. Mine's always like on the really uh, optimal, good, like almost no risk range. So that's good to know what that is, right? Uh, a complete male hormone panel in my instance, because I'm a guy. So yeah, my PSA, uh, prostate specific androgen, uh, zero to five range on a, a LabCorp test. So mine's like 90, it's less than a one. It's been that way, it's been stable. Uh, thyroid, total testosterone, free direct. Um, estradiol, so estrogen, right? Estradiol, they look at that. Sex binding glomine, glomine, glomine hormone. I always kind of mess that one up. So they look at all of the hormones and how they are in balance with each other because one being off can offset the other ones, right? It's a system. It's everything being in a balance relative to a context, the, all of the picture and so on. So you get the idea. I do all this blood work electively. It's every six months. So on TRT, you need to do lab work, blood work to be able to continue to assess and evaluate the benefit risk ratio. So as evidenced by my labs, over the years I've been doing it, I continue to maintain high benefit um, to low risk ratio, right? My lab work is not showing any concerns. And there you go. So it's a evaluation process as you go on, right? Until I were to have evidence that that's the other way around, which I hope it never turns into that, yeah, I would need to then reconsider uh, my options. So whatever anybody decides to do uh, about this business of TRT, if you're in your 50s, uh, that's going to be a personal individual situ uh, situation for yourself where you need to make an informed decision with your uh, medical doctor professional uh, who would then prescribe a protocol, right? So my end of this with my opinions and philosophy is, is really... Um, is this really the best thing for you to do, right? It's the best thing for you to do. If you don't have the lifestyle in place, the behaviors, the mannerisms and things that need to come with it, the responsibility of it may not be a good idea for you, right? And everybody's situation is different. There might be individual health reasons, right? People may not need to do this. So I hope this gets people to maybe think if, if you clicked on this video today because you're wanting to listen to videos about TRT, maybe this gets you to think and consider your situation. Does the, benef does the benefit outweigh the risk? Make an informed decision. Are you prepared and willing to practice and execute necessary uh, behaviors and lifestyle if you want to do it safe and get the benefit from it? Because without being willing to be responsible with this, it's like a form of entitlement. You're just expecting something to magically happen for you, right? So I could go on different angles with this. Um, I'm still, for where I'm at, relative to the general population, very strong, very fit. But even on TRT, do I have the same exact resilience, um, full physical abilities that I had as an 18-year-old or 25-year-old? No, I don't. I don't. TRT is not going to give that back to you. You're not going to be able to sprint the 40-yard dash like you could when you're 18 years old just because you get on TRT. Um, your one rep max on a particular lift in your 20s or even early 30s um, may not be exactly that again just because you get back on TRT. But it will give you a much a much better chance of doing it, right? You can get you closer than that. So I hope this is helpful. I probably forgot to say a few things on this topic. There's a lot of things that could be said about it. If you have any comments, maybe you're someone on TRT. Opinions. Uh, be glad to, to see them below in the comment section below. Uh, if you liked my discussion with you in this video, I'd appreciate it. If you could like the video, subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. And I wish everybody the best health and a good day. Thank you.